Hi guys, so before we get into this week's Bumbling Chef, I just want to take a quick second to kind of just explain some stuff if I'm a little off today. Um, I just, it's one of those things I feel like it really needs to be talked about. This isn't a funny joke thing, this is serious. Um, so, on Friday we had a very sad, bad thing happen at our house. Um, our dear friend, companion, uh, compatriot, associate, and uh, sidekick co-host on the show, uh, The Floof, uh, sadly passed away. So when he ran away in November, he came back very skinny, and despite our best efforts over the last few months, we were unable to get him to put weight back on. Um, and our vet, unfortunately, wasn't taking cases like that for some reason, because of COVID, I suppose, but... Um, so we just did the best we could for him, um, and unfortunately, Friday he passed away. Um, so that is that is that. Um, I am sad. I am not doing my best, but um, I'm going to try to get through this as best I can. I think I'm good. Um, I took Friday and Saturday to just be a, uh, what's the word, train wreck, just kind of today, which is Monday. Um, I'm, I'm doing better, I guess. So that is that. That's all I wanted to say going into this before we get into the episode. Um, so Floof will be missed because he, he was my boy. I, um, I'm going to miss him like crazy. I, you know. That's all I'm going to say. So, without further ado, without further sadness, um, let's get into this week's episode of The Bumbling Chef. Yeah. Good evening, or morning, or whatever time of the day it happens to be. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Lego My Dragon. Welcome back to The Bumbling Chef, the internet cook and show phenomenon that's taken the nation by storm. Okay, well, some of that's embellished, but you get the idea. On this week's episode, we are diving in head first on a family recipe that's been in our family since my grandpa found it in a magazine and I want to say the 1960s, but I don't know if that's the right date. You can not quote me on that. That is not on the record, and if you do, I will sue you. This week, we are making my grandpa's super special, amazing, delicious cheesecake. It is legitimately the best cheesecake I've ever had. It's delicious. It's amazing. It's hip. It's now. This cheesecake was my first birthday cake. This cheesecake was my birthday cake most years of my childhood. So needless to say, I was indoctrinated into the cult of cheesecake very early, and I have not left since. <laughs> Talked about cults now twice this week on content on this channel. Am I, uh, am I trying to tell myself something? I think I, think I think I might have some stuff to think about later. So long in the short of it, if you think you've had the best cheesecake in the world, you're wrong, you haven't had it yet. This definitively is the best cheesecake in the world. At least the recipe is. I don't know if I'm gonna screw it up because I, I tend to do that. I tend to ruin things with my insanity. Our first step is to preheat the fiery ball of death. The fiery ball of death that is fiery and dead. I actually have a recipe this week because um, I want to make sure that I do this the best I can. And I think I played it a little fast and loose last week with the tacos. So I don't want to make the same mistake twice. I'm going to preheat our oven for 325 degrees. Okay, order of operations here. What do we do? While that's preheating, we are going to start working on our crust. Then when our crust is formed and we do whatever we got to do with the crust, then we're going to move on to our other thing, the actual cheesecake. I forgot what a cheesecake was for a second, and so I just said the other thing. But I'm on board now. i got a plan. It's right here in black and white in my terrible handwriting, which is even worse because the pen I was using has very faded ink. But we're going to do it. So to make your crust, first step is you're going to need to melt butter. So get a microwave safe cup or in my case i'm gonna use i'm gonna use i'm gonna use where is it where is it where is it for me when i need to grind something up because i melted our actual blender i use the magic bullet the personal versatile countertop magician boy did i fall for that infomercial marketing it is not as good as they make it seem it's fine for like smoothies and stuff then maybe this purpose i don't know Again, I usually use a blender because, but I unfortunately accidentally melted our blender, so that didn't happen. See, you can see where I melted it, because I got it too close to the stove and it melted. Why do I still have this? And we're gonna take two tablespoons of our butter, two, two tablespoons of our butter. I do more than what's required with butter because I am a fat load of fatness. Get in a cup, get in a cup. Okay, half of you got in a cup. Okay, there we go. That actually is two tablespoons there, I'm not realizing, but I'm gonna do one more little, one more little go at it. Bam! 
Bam! Got it, nailed it, awesome. You got your butter, pop it in the microwave for, I don't know, until it's melted. I'm gonna go a minute and then just we'll just, we'll play it by eye. So I was very wrong. That melted just fine in 30 seconds. So, oh shit. Take that for what you will. We have our receptacle of the butter for our crusty crust. My grandpa's recipe calls for a, just a typical graham cracker crust. This is where I make some amendments because I like my cheesecake with graham cracker crust but also with a little bit of that sweetness you get from vanilla wafers. So we're gonna throw in our graham crackers. I'm just gonna do this whole pack which has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is so weird. Why are there nine graham crackers in here? Why are there nine? Do eight or do 10? Don't do nine. Don't go splitsies. Ah! So we're just going to kind of crush and crumble our whole pack into our butter. Uh, probably going to have to add more butter. Again, I do these things very fast and loose. Why am I explaining to you guys? You guys know by now. I don't do things the way I'm supposed to, even when I'm following a damn recipe. I'm just really, really dumb and really, really stupid, and you guys probably shouldn't be watching a cooking show uh, that is hosted by such a, a madman with his insanity. These are crumbling really nice, though. These graham crackers, these uh, great value brand graham crackers, despite being a fucking weird-ass number... They're crumbling really nice though. So that's that's something to look at. We're just gonna crumble up all nine of these graham crackers and then just a handful of vanilla wafers to kind of top off our crust flavor profile. Get a little bit of sweetness to it, a little bit of that non-graham cracker sweetness that we all love and cherish so much. This is crumbling like sawdust. Is that good or is that bad? I think that's what I want, but you yeah, know, that butter has all been soaked up for the most part, so that's uh, maybe don't, maybe, 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 uh, maybe be smarter about the way that you handle your, your crust than me. Seriously, I drank the Kool-Aid on the Magic Bullet train really hard. It was my favorite infomercial as a kid, and I was like, when I get a job and some money of my own with a big, big man, first thing I'm buying is a Magic Bullet. And that's actually, um, somewhat accurate to the events that actually took place. So, put it on your thing, and just grind them all up! Gr grind them all up! This is not working well. It's okay, because in my experience, in, in my travels, I've learned one thing above all else, there is nothing that more butter can't solve. So I'm essentially just gonna double up our butter, pour it over the top, and see if that helps lubricate things at all. Okay, more butter. So here, so we're gonna pour our, our butter here into our butter here. Ooh, that's nice. That's actually pretty nice. It's pooling, it's gonna do good things. And we're gonna try that magic bullet magic again. Watch it fail. What a piece of shit product. <laughs> it's working! It's working! You need your cheesecake pan, you need your blue spatula, and you're just gonna start kind of scooping this stuff out of your receptacle of choice. Okay, so we got our, our crusticles here. We just need to push it down, form a crust. You can definitely tell the difference between the graham cracker and the wafer because uh, the wafer turned a very strange it's a different consistency entirely the wafer is just it's it's soupy it's runny and it's soupy and i don't think that's necessarily a good thing but there we have it our crust it is prepared crusty it's one of those episodes i think we actually might be making a legitimate cooking show here guys like this doesn't look like a terrible, terrible crust. Just a little bit of consistency issue with the wafer because I have too much butter. Because I'm stupid. So once your crust is formed, you can actually, you can start finally working on your cake, your cheesy, delicious cake of delicious cheese goodness. If you are using a KitchenAid mixer like I am, you're gonna attach your whisk, your whisk, to your device, your doodad, your gadget, your gizmo. I want my hat back on. I, I want the hat off because it's hot. But I love my hat. I don't get to wear it enough now that I have hair again. When I was bald all summer, I wore this hat every day because I hated the look of my existence. I still do, but for different reasons now. We've got to take these four eggs and separate them and whip the egg whites in this before we can do anything else. I'm gonna gently crack these eggs, just gently crack them along the seams, and then you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta adjust this. You gotta open it, you gotta crack it open like you normally would, just get it open to the sides. You have to keep the yolk intact, and you're just gonna you're just gonna run it back and forth. You're just gonna toss your yolk back and forth between the two shells. Get all the egg whites uh, out of the shell, or at least as many as you can, 
and then your yolks should be safe. That's not a bad yolk. Like that's that's just a yolk. Don't don't break it. Don't break it. Yolk <laughs> into the bowl and do that uh, three more times. Just just keep on keeping on. Who in the fuck is ripping through this complex? They did not. They did not like plow our parking lot well. So for someone to be speeding around this complex, they're an idiot. They're gonna kill someone. They're gonna wreck a house or a car. We already had that last year. Someone drove their their car into one of the apartment buildings. I don't have any other details on that, but God, do I want them? It's like a bugger. It's a giant bugger. As always, we're gonna start on setting one, and we're just gonna whip these for a little bit and see what we can get. Get some pretty peaks out of them. Um. Um. Okay, that might be a bit of an issue, but we'll just, let's try and crank it up, crank it up a little bit more. Uh, yeah, okay, never mind, we're good, we're fine. This is gonna do just fine, just just go, just go. All the way, maximum power. Probably, probably what you need to do with this thing, I don't know. I'm gonna drop in a teaspoon of sugar, and then a second teaspoon of sugar, and yeah, that's our egg white mixture. So once your egg white is mixed and, and frothy and looking pretty pretty, we're gonna add in our cream cheese. You gotta have two eight ounce packets of cream cheese. You can use Philadelphia, you can use store brand. Um, Philadelphia really has the market cornered on cream cheese. There's a monopoly going on there. And I don't know how I feel about it. You gotta make sure that these things are room temperature or as close to room temperature as you get. Um, Cause if they're still cold, you will have run into two big problems. Number one, your cream cheese will be a bitch to blend. And number two, you risk these weird bubble curdle things forming on your cheesecake. I know that from personal experience cause I am not patient as we all know. I don't plan ahead. I just I'm like, okay guys, I'm here now. I'm gonna do something. I can't just be like, all right, take this out of the fridge, put it there. I'm gonna go uh, play Valhalla or something for a few hours, play Among Us. But no, I can't do that. I'm not wired like a smort. Open your cream cheese, get it on open. Gotta get that cream cheese open. I love cream. Oh my god, I love cream cheese. I was that kid that like we'd have like family parties, and my grandparents always like overplanned for things. So there was always like like pretzels and dip. And I remember one year the dip was cream cheese. Just drop that in there. Cream cheese. And I was like just dunking everything I could in the cream cheese. And my cousin Constance was like, Hey, yeah, Greg, you want any? You want any any chips with that cream cheese or whatever the fuck she said? And I'm like, Bitch, I will fucking stab you. I'm not, I'm not invited to family gatherings anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Happy boy. Okay. Cream cheese, away with you. Get in the thing. Do you thing. Go. So we're gonna close our, our, our blender up. We're gonna let it rip. We're gonna let it do its thing. The cheese is, the cream cheese is gonna cream. And then we're gonna add in our other stuff. We have evaporated milk, we have sugar, we have salt, we have vanilla. Gotta add all that in while this is going and doing its thing. So let's do it. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it at like halfway and see how that goes. Oh no, that, that, that's, that's good, that's fine. Yeah, a little, little lower, a little lower even. Little lower even. Look at that, look at all this cream cheese. Literally all of the cream cheese, it instantly all got stuck in the beaters. Should I be using a knife for this? Should I use a fork instead or like that spatula that I had? Probably, but you know what? The knife is what was available to me. Where is the spatula actually? That is probably smarter to use the spatula. Just, you know, take it, take it all, get all that cream cheese that's stuck in there out of there. You're gonna have to do this like nine or 10 more times. I'm gonna guesstimate, but it's fine. It's all fine. When your cream cheese starts to cream and really just kind of starts mixing well with the egg, you're gonna do a half a cup of sugar just take that half cup of sugar and dump that on in there. You then need a third a teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna do half because I'm bad at fractions. And then surprisingly enough, you're gonna need two tablespoons of flour. That's right, two tablespoons of flour. And by now I think we all know what the bumbling chef says you need to use for flour. Bread flour, not all purpose. I have spoken. Next, we're gonna add a teaspoon of vanilla or vanilla extract or vanilla flavoring. Whatever, you, whatever you've got handy will work. And then one more slight deviation from grandpa's recipe. I'm gonna add two teaspoons of lemon juice because I like that lemony flavor that some cheesecakes have. I'm gonna stop it real quick. I'm gonna take this up. I'm gonna take my spatula. I'm just gonna, again, I'm gonna get the, the cream cheese that's stuck in here off. There's not a whole lot, oh God. 
there's not a whole lot left that's stuck up here. Everything else is pretty much, you know, mixed and whipped at this point. I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna just kind of, I'm gonna give it a quick little manual stir. There's still, yeah, there's still some solid cheesecake bits in here. But that's okay, I'm just gonna stir it manually and we're gonna go from there. So now we run into a little problem. Um, I have to add the egg yolks back into the mixture now. The problem is, all the egg yolks exploded upon entry, so just gotta be careful putting them in the thing. Just little by little, bit by bit, let them get all nice and homogenized. Or dump them in at once. I don't know if that actually matters or not, but you know. Crank it up to two, just make sure it gets all folded into the mixture. Make sure that cheesecake and egg and egg and cheesecake all get mixed in together. All right, turn that off, lift it up. The, see how like just that all just evaporates. That's all. That's what we want. We want it to be that thick. All right. I'm gonna take my spatula. I'm just gonna push in the sides, kind of like what I did with the bread dough. Um, but this is more so I can. If there's anything like stuck to the sides, namely egg, um, it gets kicked up and it gets, you know, combined with everything else. I think that actually we're good right now. Um, so we have finished this step. Good job, team. Good job. So once your mixture is done in your KitchenAid mixer or whatever mixer you want to be using, that's when we're going to take our delicious pan of crust, our delicious bowl of, 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 of cake. That's our mixture. That's our batter. Whee! It's like 3D. Whee! So once you get your crust the way you want it, just start ladling in, ladling in your delicious, nutritious cheesecake. Oh, look at, look at all that, though. It's going well. It's going good. We're getting a lot of it out. Still a lot in there, though. There is definitely a smidgen of confusion right now because of this. This, this condensed, evaporated milk. Um, the recipe calls for it, but nowhere in the instructions did I see anything about it. It's too late now. <laughs> so once all of your mixture is in the pan with the crust, it's all looks ready to go in the oven. We got one more step before we go in the oven. Take this other pan. I got another pie pan. Fill it with water. Fill it with the delicious, nutritious water of the, the nectar of the gods. And then this pan of water is going in the oven on the bottom shelf, below the cheesecake. Then when you are ready for the main event, your cheesecake, minus the evaporated milk, your cheesecake will go in the oven and it's gonna go in the oven for an hour, one hour. The oven will then get turned off at the hour and the oven will cool completely before you remove the cheesecake. Away with you, cheesecake. One hour, one hour. 16 minutes is one hour. One hour, one hour. 16 minutes is one hour. It has been an hour. When the oven time has expired, we're gonna turn the oven off and we're gonna leave it. We're gonna leave it sit, let the oven cool down with the cheesecake inside of it. That's at least how it was explained to me in the directions. Uh, off with you. I'm gonna put a timer on for about half an hour at this point. That should give the oven ample time to cool down, give the cheesecake ample time to finish cooking, and cheesecake. So 30 more minutes until we get that delicious, delicious goodness. I didn't get toppings. I didn't, I didn't get toppings. I didn't get like a, 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 what's a, what's a topping? Strawberries. I didn't get strawberries or caramel. Didn't get caramel cheesecake. We have, we have chocolate sauce. That's a topping. Showtime! I don't know what that was. I don't, I don't know what that was. But it's been an hour. It has been an hour, an hour, hour. No, half hour. Half hour. There's, take an hour and then <laughs> half hour. Our oven, our hot fiery ball of death is not hot or fiery. Um, but it's still a ball of death. You can still die. You can still suffocate in an oven. I'm just saying. You can still suffocate in an oven. So, time has passed. Ooh, I can just touch this with my bare hands now. Okay, it's still, the, the pan is still a little hot. It's still a little hot. But look, guys. We got us a cheesecake! A few logistical errors of not uh, finishing the crust with a cheesecake pan. You unsnap it and it, it splits. It splits on right in half. So if it's sticking, just gotta take your butter knife, just go, go along the edges, just go and go along the edges. Oh no, oh well, 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 yeah. Okay, yes, no, okay, we can keep, we can do this, guys, we can do this, we can together. Cheesecake! Push this back together maybe, yes, no, no, okay, that's fine, that's all fine. It's all, oh, that actually worked. 
groovy. Nailed it. Wish we had topping. That would fix everything. So this will be my piece. The, the, the screwed up part will be my piece, as it usually is. My test piece for this episode of the bum Le Bumble Ing Chef. Okay, so we gotta just, just oh, so delicately cut her right there. Really push to get to the graham cracker crust, the graham cracker wafer crust. Make an equal cut right there, just like that. Wah. How hot are you? You edible, are you edible temperature? I think it's edible temperature. So let's take our ceremonial um, first bite of a food on bumbling chef. Push forward, so now, oh god, okay, well that's, that's what we're gonna bite then, that's falling off, ah, oh. Hmm, that is very close. Oh. That is, ooh. Ooh, what? By whipping the egg whites the way that we did, it creates kind of like a lemon meringue texture almost. With, you know, you're obviously cream cheese, cheesily cheese, like tasting taste. Oh. The crust is so moist because of all the butter we added. This is pretty close. I think the, okay, so the element that's missing, I am sure, is this carnation condensed evaporated milk. But that being said, this is still a very good attempt. Happy 12 hours later, everyone. Yes, we're doing this again. So for the record, our this is this is what's left of the cheesecake. Um, I had some pieces for breakfast, just to say the least. It turned out okay. It tastes good, but the lack of the the evaporated milk is very very evident in the final product, um, both in taste and consistency. Therefore, we really don't have any other choice but to do it again. And I know what you're saying, but Grego, you've gotten close with other recipes like the pizza or like the biscuits and gravy thing or whatever, 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 and you didn't go back and redo that from scratch. You're right. For me, no. I would not do it again this soon, even though it is actually really delicious and that is a big factor in why I would definitely do it again. But no, it's not for me today. We're not doing this for me. Today, we're doing this for floof. This is for Floof. This is Floof's cheesecake. I can hear him right now. He's looking up at us. He's encouraging us. He's going, boy, you better finish that cheesecake for Floof. Floof gonna eat it and you gonna like it, boy. Yeah, I know what I said. I said looking up. Yeah, Floof's in hell. Um, it was really, really great to me and I love the cat. But um, he did some stuff on the side of the road he's not proud of. Told me in confidence. So, yeah, Floof's in hell. Plus, it gives me a chance to kind of redo some aspects of this that I'm not happy with. Not just the milk stuff. Because the milk will add... A, it'll make it bigger and make it thicker and less... Uh, it was very... It was very... What's the word I used? What's the word I used? I think it's the meringue element. I guess the egg white. That's what I'm going for here, as far as the texture goes. It's so airy and fluffy. Yeah, that word. That word. Good job, Pastor Greg. And it'll also add a much sweeter flavor to it. So, we're gonna... We're gonna take this from the tippy top but don't worry this won't be a double length episode i'm gonna go through this cut as quick as i can all right so start preheating your oven i'm gonna get our two tablespoons of butter thrown right in this thing this microwave safe magic bullet cup and then i got more graham crackers one two three four five six seven eight nine nine why are there nine graham crackers i assumed it was a fluke i'm gonna do the graham crackers a little bit differently this time i'm gonna take them one at a time and crumble them and i'm then going to take a vanilla wafer and crumble it so i'm gonna go one 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 do that ten times nine times technically so there's gonna be more Wafer, I guess. I don't I don't even know. So the way that I did it in the last time around with the wafers on the top, um, the wafer kind of all clumped together. It didn't really mix well. And since I added too much butter to it, it was a little bit gummy. Like the, the wafer kind of gummified. Um, and that's not what we want per se. So we're just gonna crumble up our graham cracker. These are not crumbling as well as the other ones do. Did crumble up a wafer. These crumble spectacularly. And just repeat that process nine or ten times until you get everything you've ever wanted in a cup of graham cracker crumbs. Another thing I actually screwed up last time is you're supposed to add two teaspoons of sugar to your graham cracker crust. I didn't do that because I'm dumb and forgot about that stuff entirely because I was too busy crumbling crackers. Our oven's preheated. Gonna pour our cup of butter right on over the top of our crust. And just like the first time around, we're gonna make sure that we have crust all 
over the bottom of this pan. Doesn't have to go up the sides. Be nice if it did, but doesn't have to. Just as long as the bottom is coated in crust, you are good. That is arguably a better crust. So, cool beans. Just like before, separate your egg whites and your egg yolks. Make sure, this one's gonna be hard because I automatically uh, goofed up the opening process of this one. But we're just gonna have to do our best. Throw in two teaspoons of sugar. Once your whites are separated and put in th two, two, spoon, two, two, spoon, two teaspoons of sugar. Whip it real good. If your cream cheese is not quite at room temperature yet, you can just pop it into the microwave for 30 seconds. A little more time. 30 more seconds. And just like before, we turn this on, put it on setting one or setting two. Your, your yolk, again, it's whipped, it's good, it's delicious. Let's go to, let's go to. Take your spatch, take your two cream cheeses. I'm gonna split these bad boys in half and just do it like half by half. That seems like a good way of handling things. Yep, yep, yep that, that's, that's actually distributing quite nicely. Flipper, put it in. Flipper, put it in. And flipper, put it in. Nice. Let's turn it on up a little bit, or a lot, whatever you wanna do. Now your cream cheese is back into creaminess form, mixed in with your egg whites. Let's add all of our other good fixins, and don't forget the evaporated milk this time, Greg. Oh. Half cup of sugar, half a cup of sugar, half a teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of flour, one teaspoon of vanilla, two teaspoons of lemon juice going in. So this is where I'm stupid. The recipe, um, you know how I said it didn't say anything about the milk? It does. It, it does. Yeah, we add the egg in without the thing on, and then we add the milk, and then we turn the thing on to fold the egg in. I am an idiot. I am fucking stupid. ADHD brain just sees words and jumps from one to the next at random, and I hate it. Turn this back on one. We add our milk. Pour the whole can on in there. It doesn't spe so the recipe doesn't specify size. I'll say that much. The the milk size is not mentioned. So I just grabbed. I just put in a can of 12 ounce. Uh, it might need more. It might need less. I don't know. But 12 ounces is what we're using. And then one by one, little by little, let's start putting these egg yolk bits back on in to our cheesecake. Turn it on up. Really get that going. Voila. That is really soupy. I th I'm I'm worried now. I'm worried that I added too much milk. But you know what? Maybe that's fine. Maybe it'll like, I don't know, do something when it's in the... It's got some thickness to it. There's some thickness there. There's some thickness. That is a lot more, though. There's a lot more matter in this pan than there was the first time around. Fill up a separate pan with water to put on the very bottom shelf of the oven. So now with your water pan in there, you're going to place your cheesecake on the middle rack directly above the water pan, and you're going to let it cook for one hour. Uno hour. Hour. At the end of your hour, of course, as I said previously, turn off your oven. You're just gonna let that sit, cool down, cheesecake inside for half an hour. And that is it. That'll be it. That'll be it'll be done. 30 more minutes. Got cheesecake. Cheesecake time! Ah! I can't. I can't, I can't do jazz hands quite right. I don't, I don't know what's up with that. Oh my God, that is really hot. I'm burning my hands. It's supposed to cool by now. But if you're lucky here, we got us a nice, delicious, little cracked, but looking really thick and really jiggly in comparison to the last one. So let's cut us up a nice little, nice little tasty test slice just to see how we did, how we came out at the end of this journey, the second, time around let's do it let's let's just get right in there and pull back the curtain and peel us a slice so the crust from yesterday's cheesecake was a little overdone uh it was still good and certain areas were really moist um but it was really inconsistently textured it was some of it was moist some of it was really fucking dry and a little burned um this one looks again it's, it's got a nice moisture to it i think again it's not overcooked because we had the ratio correct this time i still think i have a little too much of that condensed milk but i don't we'll never know the answer to that for sure um so let's take our customary lego my grego tv first bite of this cheesecake and see how it tastes oh. hot oh my god oh hot let's just go from the back side and see if we get a little bite little bite okay 
Okay, yeah, yeah. That's what I wanted. That's what I want. Okay. I think I nailed it the second time around, actually. Oh. Um, but with the milk in this, it got that perfect level of moisture. I whipped the egg more this time, so it was was more of a meringue type thing. Um, but this will play. I might this will this is this is a very respectable, nice and jiggly little jiggle 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 jiggle, jiggle, jiggle cheesecake. I'm gonna cut this slice this slice I got here in half because I, I want to taste. I want to do another a second taste test with the strawberry elements, but I also don't want to eat a whole nother slice in this one setting. So, here we go. Ooh. That strawberry goop almost has a Captain Crunch-like taste to it, which makes no sense to me. There's not strawberries in Captain Crunch, is there? There's crunch berries. It's all crunch berries, right? It's crunch yum and crunch berries. Fuck, that's good. So, there you have it, folks. That is how you take some love and some care and you make a cheesecake and then you kind of botch that cheesecake so then you make another cheesecake thank you guys so much for watching this episode of bumbling chef if you liked it go ahead and give me a thumbs up in the button system clicky bar thing down there below leave a comment subscribe to lego my Grandma tv if you feel like it you don't have to it's just it's nice it's nice when you subscribe to lego my Grandma tv and then you tell 10 friends to also subscribe to lego my Grandma tv if you try Grandpa's Cheesecake Recipe for yourselves, let me know in the comments below. Let me know your results. If you have another cheesecake recipe, tell me that too. I like knowing things and, and stuff. I think we did Floof Proud today. We made him a cheesecake. I hope, I hope he knows that I miss him like crazy. And I hope he knew that I loved him to pieces. So... That's all we're gonna say on the sad cat front. We made him a cheesecake. Uh, we didn't. We we made him. A, we made him the good cheesecake. The other one, that was all for me and my own uh, greed. It's Floof's will. It's Floof's cat in hell will that brought us together to make this cheesecake. And that's all we need to say this week. So until next time, guys. I've been Lego Mike Grego. You have been awesome. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye!